Hello, Sekiro fans. This is David Polygon Guides, and I'm going to show you how to beat Owl Father in Harada Estate. I wish that I had a very easy way to beat him, but the truth is he may be the toughest boss in the game, but you can beat him, so we'll show you how. Let's talk about the best things to bring with you into the fight. Uh, Owl Father is a lot like Wolf or Sekiro, which means he can pretty much do what you can do. That renders most everything you have ineffective. For example, if you use your prosthetic spear or a thrust, he's likely to punish you with a Makiri counter. So in short, don't worry so much about prosthetic tools. This is a battle of basic moves and a couple of combat arts. Let's talk about those combat arts. The first is Mortal Draw. You ought to have that by the time you face Owl in Harada Estate. And it's a great way to deal significant vitality damage, even if he's blocking. And that is the biggest advantage of this move. Keep two things in mind while you're using this. Number one, you can use it even if you run out of spirit emblems. It'll just be a weaker version of the attack. And number two, you can attack with one or two swings and one is perfectly okay. There's a long windup for this, so don't take the second swing if you suspect that Owl is about to attack you back. Another combat art that we like a lot is the Whirlwind Slash. It's a very early game combat art. You just sort of spin around and do two attacks with one press of the attack button. It causes a fair bit of damage and it's just short enough to substitute for a regular attack, which is always really good. All right, let's talk about the first phase of the fight. Our strategy for defeating Owl Father is about identifying his attacks and then responding to them while stopping yourself from doing perfectly reasonable things that will get you killed. Let's talk about Owl's attacks. Starting with his first perilous attack, which is a thrust. Owl thrusts his sword and slides toward you. He stabs, he jumps, he spins around in a whirlwind, attacks throughout, and then hits the ground. It is devastating. Sometimes he just does the perilous attack by itself, often with a zigzag move first. Other times, he'll throw his shinobi firework and then follow up with the perilous thrust. Use the Makiri counter to catch his blade, which will cause posture damage, and then you can take a swing or two. If you miss the Makiri counter, you can still avoid the attack. You can jump or step dodge behind him and then follow him up with a couple of attacks. His second perilous attack is a slash. He swipes horizontally with his sword. Resist all urges to jump over this attack. If you get caught while you're in the air, you'll take approximately infinity percent more damage than you otherwise would. As far as we can tell, you can actually jump away from the attack, but dodging is safer. Instead, when you see the red kanji symbol appear, wait for him to start moving and then step dodge through his slash then it's best to do something counterintuitive. Stand near him. Your proximity convinces Al to raise his sword above his head because he's preparing for a powerful downward attack, but you are safe for a moment. You can hit him once or twice while his sword is above his head, and then when you hear him make a noise, that's the trigger, step dodge to his side or behind him, and then follow up with attacks of your own. While you're dodging, he will miss you, he will attack the ground, and he will take damage when you attack. It's tough to get the timing right on this move, we know, because it's easy to step dodge too soon. If you do that too soon, that will interrupt his downward attack and convince him to attack in a different way and probably hurt you. Again, wait until you hear him grunt and then step dodge. All right, those are his two perilous attacks. Let's talk about everything else he has. First up is a head stomp and then jump away. So he jumps off of your head and he lands several yards away. Block the jump, which is easy, and then when he lands, it's a good time to heal or block to recover your posture or even run up to him and press the attack. Next up, the Shuriken Swipe. This attack seems innocuous, but it's arguably his most dangerous attack. Owl throws a Shuriken and follows up with a sliding swipe of his sword. You can block both, but just be aware that blocking destroys your posture and you'll be unable to move for a second or two after. A better option is to step dodge around him as he swings with his sword and then follow up with an attack of your own. This is also a good opportunity to use Mortal Draw or Whirlwind Slash. Do not try to jump around or above his sword swipe. Taking this hit in the air is far more dangerous than it is on the ground. Seriously, he can clear most or all of your vitality bar with his sword swing during this attack. The shuriken jump. Owl throws one or more often two shurikens, jumps, 
does a somersault in the air and lands with a powerful attack. Run toward Owl as he jumps so that you're behind him when he lands. Then you can attack. This is also a good opportunity to use Mortal Draw or Whirlwind Slash. Zigzag attacks. Owl father zigs left and then right, and then his next move is a crapshoot. It could be a perilous attack. It could be a single shuriken. The problem with the zigzag attacks is that he can follow up in several ways. Wait it out and respond after you see what he's going to do next. Do not attack, or you're likely just to get hurt. The Shinobi Firecracker. Owl throws the same Shinobi Firecracker that Sekiro has, and there are several possibilities next. First up, he can throw the Firecracker alone and then just sort of stands behind the explosion. There's also the Firecracker plus a Perilous Attack Thrust, so he throws the Firecrackers and then he thrusts in a Perilous Attack, which you can stop with a Mercury Counter or honestly just walk or dodge around. There is the Firecracker plus the Slash, where he tosses out his Firecrackers and then swings his sword right where he's standing. And there's the Firecracker plus the Shuriken Slash, where he throws the Shuriken, optionally slides an impossible distance toward you, and then slashes with his sword. If you get caught in the explosion, you'll get staggered and you will take damage. Getting away is the best thing you can do, and it's honestly not difficult. Just watch for Owl's tell. He waves his arm in front of him to spread out the firecrackers. When you see that, get away. Or, if you are already running toward Owl, you can run through the firecrackers before they detonate and get a hit in. He also has a variant of the firecracker that we will talk about next, which is the Shinobi firecracker combo. Al chains several of his attacks together to form a combo that ends with a Shinobi firecracker and a swipe. You'll know he's doing this and that a firecracker is coming when he attacks with his shoulder as part of the combo. So just block to endure this and then jump or dodge away or run behind him when he throws the firecrackers to respond with an attack. Owl Father Phase 2 is almost exactly like the first phase with a few additions. So everything we've already talked about applies and you can use the same tactics as you did earlier. His first new move is what we're going to call the Glowing Owl Teleport Slam. Owl becomes transparent, which looks a lot like your Mist Raven prosthetic tool, transforms into the blue owl that's flying around the arena, transforms back into himself while he's in the air, and then rejoins the fight with a powerful downward attack. When Owl becomes an Owl, start running. If you're lucky enough to be able to see where the Owl is flying, just avoid it. If you can't see it, you can run and pray for the best. Then find him and lock on again. That might be the most annoying part of this, is finding him and locking on again. If you're good or lucky enough to be near Owl when he lands, you can follow his attack with one of your own. There's also a new perilous attack where he calls in the flying owl to his hand. The owl catches fire and then flies toward you. When you see the owl appear in owl's hand, run away. That is the tell. You've got time to get some distance, which is a big advantage here. Now you have a couple of options. Number one, you can jump to the side of the flaming owl as it's coming at you, which is actually really easy because it's not super fast. Another option is to move Sekiro so that there's a wooden pillar between you, owl, and his owl. That will block the attack. He often, not always, but I think it's fair to say most of the time, follows the owl attack up with his perilous thrust attack. It's best to get some distance between you and owl. So if you jumped over the flames, you can catch his perilous attack with a Makiri counter, or maybe you can even be out of range if you ran far enough away. And also, if you put pillars between you and the owls, those can disrupt his attack. He also tends to teleport right after this, so just be aware of that. The only other significant difference in the second phase is that his head stomp attack now gets some shurikens. So he has an upgrade to the previously innocuous head stomp where he throws shurikens before he lands. Just press the attack here. Run toward Al when he's in the air and you will avoid the projectiles and have an opportunity to attack. Defeat Owl the Father, and you will receive Memory Foster Father, the Aromatic Flower, and the Father Surpassed Achievement Trophy. Good luck, and thanks for watching.